Before being able to dial in your shop for better performance and better comfort, you first need to learn the language of suspension. So let's dive straight in and it all starts with SAG. SAG is the measurement of how much your suspension settles under load. Even parked up in your garage, your bike is under load. And this load introduces two very closely related SAG measurements. Free SAG, otherwise known as static SAG, and rider SAG, also known as latent SAG. What are they and why do they matter? Free or static SAG is the amount that the suspension compresses when the bike is off its stand and all the bike's weight is going through the suspension. Whereas rider or latent SAG is the bike with the rider on board fully dressed in their normal riding gear. So free SAG is just the bike's weight pushing down on the suspension, whereas rider SAG is both the bike's weight and the rider fully dressed in their riding gear. And both of these SAG measurements for front and rear can be easily measured using a tape measure. But let's just stick with the basic terminology for now. So now that we understand SAG, let's move on to spring rate. Spring rate actually refers directly to the spring's stiffness. Spring rate is at the core of forks and shocks and isolates your body from shocks transmitted up through the bike from the road. And keeping the tyre contact patch on the road responding really quickly to road irregularities. Spring rate is what we effectively loosely refer to as a spring stiffness. So you can think of spring rate as stiffness. This is why it's really important to have the right spring rate for your body weight range and the types of rides you ride on, not to mention your particular riding style. There's no need for you to do any arithmetic, you just need to provide your suspension tuner with that information and they'll ensure you get the right type of spring for your style of riding and your body weight. For a comfortable and controlled ride, you need springs that are soft enough to handle bumps, but stiff enough to handle bottoming out over dips and bumps, and also acceleration and braking forces. A huge part of that is having the right spring rate for one up or two up, or having luggage or no luggage. Getting the right spring rate is the foundation to suspension, therefore it is fundamentally critical, yet it's easy to obtain. You just have to make sure you know your weight and all your riding gear, including your helmet. So now we understand spring rate, and what comes next is spring stroke. So what is spring stroke? Well spring stroke is the amount of compression that can safely be applied to the spring. It is a measurement in inches or centimetres of how much that spring can be compressed safely before it actually bottoms out. Your weight greatly affects how quickly that spring stroke is used up while riding, hence why it's really important to get a spring that matches your full riding weight. But once you have the right spring you can finally control the spring's rate via preload, which we'll get to soon, but first Let's have a look at travel. A spring when not installed into the actual shock has what is known as free length. This is the distance from the top to the bottom of the spring with zero tension. Once the spring is installed into the shock body, the spring becomes under tension because the shock body has less travel than what the free travel is of the spring. And this creates a spring tension. This tension is called installed Preload. Installed preload ensures that the collar compresses the spring a little sufficiently to hold the spring in place. And all shocks have installed preload, even if you wind the preload adjustment fully out to its completely relaxed state. This is simply to hold the spring in place. But what exactly is preload? Preload is the amount of load that's pre-applied to the spring when the bike is at rest. Hence the name pre-load but it also affects the bike's usage of the spring stroke while it's being ridden. As you're turning the castellated collar down on your shock, or in this case, the nitrogen knob clockwise, you're adding more preload. The more preload, the more spring tension, but more importantly, the harder it is to apply more compression. And therefore, more force is required to initiate suspension action, making it harder to bottom out. A bottom out occurs when suspension tries to exceed 100% of its available travel. This ends abruptly and often painfully the suspension action. You feel this is a sudden and violent kick in the butt as your rear tyre hits a bump or a dip in the road. Suspension action is just fancy lingo for suspension movement in the form of compression and extension. So why add more preload? Adding more preload creates a feeling of a firm ride. But preload and spring rate on their own don't control how hard or soft your ride is. Nor do they help with the pogo effect you may be experiencing. So preload is an adjustment that allows you to finely tune sag. 
To correctly assess and effectively tweak your other shock adjustments, it's critical that you've both got sag and preload correctly set for either one up or two up. Now that we understand sag and the different types of sag and preload and travel and spring rates, we can move on to the subject of damping. We've all heard of steering dampers and how they dampen the movement of steering, well suspension works in a similar way. With regards to suspension, damping controls the rate at which a spring compresses or extends when it hits a bump. Technically, damping is friction that consumes energy of an undesired motion. It converts kinetic energy into heat energy, and that's why your shock might feel a little bit warm after you've been riding. Inside shocks, this is accomplished by having oil, a needle and a valve with a small hole in it, which the needle inserts into, and the hole can be controlled by external adjustments, allowing less or more oil to pass through. There's two damping controls on high-end shocks, there's compression and there's rebound. Compression damping controls how fast or slow the shock is able to compress. Therefore, less damping provides a faster compression and a softer feel whereas more damping provides a slower compression and a stiffer feel. With compression you have two adjustments, you have a high adjustment and a low adjustment. You may have seen H and L or high and low written on shocks in the past and wondered what that actually means. High relates to the speed of the shaft, the shaft movement. So when you're riding along and you hit a big bump and the compression occurs really rapidly, you've got a high speed shaft movement, then to control the characteristics of how that works, you need to adjust the high adjustment knob. If you're riding on a bumpy road or going off road where you're hitting rapid successive bumps or dips causing rapid and successive compression and rebound suspension movements then you might want to consider adjusting your high speed compression to avoid a bottom out. But if you're going off road for example and you're slowly working your way through some rough terrain, some rocks and stuff but you're not going that quickly, you might want to soften that suspension up by winding off your high compression. On the other hand you have your low compression adjuster and this allows you to handle what your compression should be like when you're traveling across relatively normal roads. For example just a normal street where there aren't big dips and bumps and there's no rocks where the actual suspension movement is relatively linear. The low speed adjuster handles the compression while you're transferring your body weight, you're accelerating, braking or turning into a corner. And the more gentle undulations which cause a low speed shift in suspension movement. Although reducing low speed compression gives a softer ride, it is at the sacrifice of control. As I mentioned earlier, the job of suspension is to keep your tyres in contact with the road. With fully adjustable shocks, you're better able to adjust suspension movement to control in a more graceful way the way your tyres go over bumps and into dips in the road. But what's the right setting for one rider could be the wrong for another. It all depends on your riding style and your personal preferences. This fine level of adjustment doesn't exist on the R9T as standard. This is one reason why you might upgrade along with getting a harder spring that matches your weight and your riding style. So you can see how the spring, the spring rate, the preload and compression affects how hard or soft your ride feels. But it doesn't stop there because immediately after your spring compresses, what does it do? That's right, it rebounds. So rebound damping regulates the speed at which your fork or shock recovers from compression. Or in other words, bounces back once it hits a dip or a bump in the road and returns to its full length of travel. When you hit a bump or dip in the road, your shock compresses. Rebound damping not only controls the recovery of your shock in a fixed manner, but also how fast or slow your shock returns to its full length of travel. Releasing the energy stored up after the initial compression of the shock when the tyre had a dip or a bump in the road. If you adjust your rebound too far in one direction or the other, you can experience interesting phenomena with the way your suspension reacts. For example, if you set your rebound too slow, you can get what's called packing down. And this will be a harsh, bumpy ride with poor traction and also poor control as your rear wheel hits bumps in the road, which you can fix by speeding up your rebound. Doing this will ensure that your bike's wheels are ready for the next impact, ensuring that your tyres stay in contact with the road. On the other hand, if you make your rebound too fast, you're going to get the famous pogo effect, in which case you want to slow down your rebound. Rebound also has a direct effect on your ride height, which also has an indirect on your steering characteristics because it puts the bike more up onto its nose. So you can see how all four variables, spring rate, preload, compression, rebound, culminate to affect how hard or soft your ride feels. 
you've gained a better understanding of shock suspension in this video then please click the like button down below and if you'd like to see more on the BMW R9T then feel free to subscribe but in the meantime you might want to watch this video right here.